Good morning, CWC Life Manteca. How's everybody doing this morning? I ask this question every Sunday, but who's ready to worship? Y'all can do better than that. Who's ready to worship this Sunday morning? How many of you came in here expecting something great, expecting to receive something from the Lord? Listen, I love, I lo I love that the word says that he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. So whatever it is you're expecting this morning, God's going to do above and beyond that. Amen? I don't got no believers in here. So whatever you're expecting this morning, God's going to do above and beyond that. Amen? All right. All right. Praise God. All right, let's go ahead. I'm going to pray us in, and then we're going to get started with worship. Heavenly Father, we give you praise this morning. Lord, we praise you and we lift you up in this place, Father God. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that is due to you and you alone, Father. Nobody else will get the glory but you, King Jesus. God, we step aside today. We ask that you would come on in and make your presence known. In Jesus' mighty name, all of God's people said, amen. Blessed assurance in Jesus Christ.
went to hell and he took the keys. He kind of a Russia. He went to hell and he took the keys. But that's not how the story ends, amen? Because in three days, somebody say three days. Come on, somebody say three days. Somebody say three days. He rose again with all power in his hands. Come on. We have a reason to shout and declare that we're free today. Not because of anything that we've done. Not because of anything that we've done in our own power, but because, because he's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Come on now. Praise God. Oh, y'all, let me calm down. I got to do this last song. God is good, amen. I'm sorry, I get excited when I talk about Jesus. I get excited when I talk about Jesus. Come on, there's power in his name. There's healing in his name. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our praise. He's so worthy of it. Because his word says that even while we were still sinners, even while we were still living in sin and choosing to go against him, he died on the cross for us. Knowing that we would deny him, knowing that we would curse him, knowing that someone would spit in his face, he still went to the cross. Find any other reason to praise him. Let that be your reason to praise him this Sunday morning. That he chose the cross for you. He chose the cross for you. You don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. But he chose the cross for each and every person that's here. Each, every person on the face of this earth, he chose the cross for. Will you choose him? chose the cross for you. Will you choose him? Let this worship moment be personal. I know we like, we like to pump you up and we like to tell you what to do in worship, but I just want to encourage you to worship the Lord the way you believe and feel that he deserves to be worshiped this Sunday morning. He's worthy of it all.
Come on, give God a shot this Sunday morning. Welcome CWC Life, Manteca. Welcome family. Thank y'all for joining us this Sunday morning. Man, God is already moving in this place. How many can feel God moving in this place already? Yes, God. Yes, God. All right, y'all, I'm going to get you announcements. Go ahead and return to your seats. Um, even as you're leaving the altar, God can still do a work. So stay in that place of worship. All right, we're going to have our ushers come forward so we can collect our offering. While the ushers are coming forward, I want to welcome those that are watching us online. Thank you for joining us this Sunday morning. So glad you're spending your Sunday with us today. There's still room here for you at the church. So come on in. Come on in. There's seats available for you. All right, so we have text to tithe. If you have not set that up already, there's a number up here for you to text in. It's going to gather some information from you so that you can uh, text the tide moving forward. However, if you would still like to give um, by cash, you can do that. We always have our ushers available. So I'm going to pray for this offering. King Jesus, we worship you. We honor you. We adore you, Father God. God, we thank you for being the one that we can look to for all of our needs, Lord Jesus, because you can supply them because of your riches and glory, not because of what we have, but because of what you have, King Jesus. And Father God, as we continue to honor you in another form of worship with our giving, God, I ask that you would bless those that give, Lord Jesus. Bless those that give, Lord God, and so that whatever they find themselves in the need of, God, Lord Jesus, that their blessing would be found in you, Lord. I ask that you would bless their offering 100-fold. May it come back to them, pressed down, shaken together, and runneth over. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. So do we have any first-time visitors in the house? Go ahead and throw your hand up. I'm not going to ask you to stand up, but welcome, welcome. I see some of y'all. Any other visitors in the house? Welcome. I see you over there. It's a little dark in here, so I can't see everybody, but if I'm missing you, please forgive me. Charge it against my head and not my heart. Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday morning. Over here on the left side at the end, you can um, go over there and meet some of our ministers and pastors. They would love to connect with you. We also have a QR code for you to scan. 
um, so that we can gather some information from you and connect you to some of the different ministries that's going on throughout the week. We have some birthday shout outs in the house today. We have Xavier Talamantes, Andrew Talamantes, Josh Bailly, and Christina Valentin. Happy birthday to all of you. May God bless this year for you. All right, so for our announcements, this week, say no life groups. All right, so everybody said it. That means nobody's going to show up on Wednesday because we don't have life groups, all right? So no life groups this Wednesday. However, this Friday is our Good Friday services. So we have one service that's going to be in Spanish at 6 o'clock. And then we have our English service, which is at 730 on Friday night. All right, this Saturday, our kids are going to have an Easter hunt. Um, yeah, let's give it up for our kids. Give it up for our kids. We do it big every year. There's still time for you to bring donations for the Easter hunt. You can drop them off at the office or you can um, bring them. Well, we don't have Wednesday. So drop them off throughout the week at the office uh, for our kids. Make sure that y'all bring your pillowcases. Okay, all your kids, make sure you bring your pillowcase. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> bring your pillowcases so you can fill them up with different uh, treats. And that starts at 10. 30 a.m. on Saturday. All right. So this Sunday, March 31st, it's Easter Sunday, and we are going to have our Easter services. One of them is at 845. The other is at 1030. And then we have our Spanish service at 1230. All right. So two English, 845 and 1030. And then our Spanish is at 1230. Um, invite a guest. Invite family members. If there's ever a day that people are going to come to church, it's going to be on Easter and Christmas, right? So invite your friends, invite your coworkers, invite your family members. We have an amazing production, and hearts are always touched whenever we do this production. Let's give it up for our bike blessing. It's going to be on April 27th. If you have a bike, if you have a car um, that you want to participate in this, feel free to see someone in the men's ministry. And then we have our men's conference. Let's give it up for the men's conference. All right. I hear you, fellas. I hear you, fellas. That's June 29th, I believe. Okay, it's up here on the board. Um, there's a QR code if you would like to sign up, as well as you can sign up in the back um, to register for that. And then lastly, the men's group is looking for volunteers for our watchman's uh, group. If you would like more information to sign up, please see Pastor Chris Senna. All right. Or you can sign up in the foyer. All right, praise God. Oh, we got the kids coming up. So our mini masters are going to minister this morning. Let's give it up for our mini masters this Sunday morning.
Come on, let's give it up for Mini. Oh, they got the knock. Let's give it up for Mini Masters. That was amazing. It was beautiful. I love to see the kids minister. Come on, let's give it up for them. That was beautiful. Good job. Praise the Lord. All right, all right. So we have another ministry that's going to be ministering to us this morning. Can we also stand up and give some applause for Jehovah Nisi Flag Ministries? Um, before they start, the other kids are dismissed to go to Kids Club uh, for Kids Church.
Pretty loud. Amen. If you weren't awake by now, that should have brought you up. Good morning, church. How are you guys doing today? Happy Palm Sunday. I'm excited to be here with you today. Uh, I'll be preaching. Um, I just want to give you a quick announcement about our very own bishop. He's doing amazing. He is getting up and around. He can't keep him down. He's itching to come back to church. He's just an amazing. I know he's watching me now, so he's going to critique me. So just pray that I do a great job today. And so, but I'm so excited and he just wants to send his love to you guys. And um, we're just believing for great things in his life. I believe this is a God-ordained time because he never rests. Never. Him and Mama Kelly. And so I think this is a time for him just to sit back, receive from God, and get rejuvenated. Because I believe when he comes back, there's just going to be a move within our church. And I hope you're ready. And so, awesome, awesome, awesome. And so I want to be able to pray with you guys today. So just bow our heads and close your eyes. Dear Father, I thank you today for this already just momentous occasion, Father God, in your presence. You've already fallen upon this place, Father God, as we ushered you in with our worship. And our children has praised your name, Father God. And Jehovah Nisi has just brought the presence down, my Lord. I pray that this message in this moment, Father God, be able to just for us to receive in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Woo, who's ready to receive today? Amen. Do I need a change to a hell hell? I feel like I'm echoing. It's all right. Um, can I get an echo microphone? There we go. Ooh, I'm going to have to use only one hand today, and you know how that goes. All right. Can you mute me on my other one? Testing one, two. All righty. So, everybody's, everybody say triumphant entry. Come on, I, 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 I've been going through, and Bishop's like, go ahead and just preach what you feel. I'm like, oh, that's the worst thing to do for me. I'm like, there's so many things, just with the triumphal entry, with the, the coming into Jerusalem, the, the part where they throw their cloaks and their palm branches before him, the, the loosening of the donkey, and, the, and, and just all kinds of things. And I was just going through, and there's this one part in the story that I've always missed. I read that part, but I didn't continue to read and we're going to get to that point today. So if you guys could go with me to Luke 19, 28 through 41. So I'm just going to try to read this so you guys have an idea of the triumph of entry. If you don't know what this is, it's when Jesus came in on a donkey into, the, into Jerusalem. It says, when he had said this, he went on ahead going to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he drew near to Bethage and Bethany at the mount called Olivet. That he sent two of his disciples, everybody say two. I just want to make sure you're ready. Saying, go into the village opposite of you. Where you enter, or where you will enter, you will find a colt tied. On which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. I believe God is going to loosen some things in this church today. And I hope you're ready. And if anyone asks, why are you loosing in it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. The Lord is in need of whatever you've been holding on to. The Lord is in need of whatever has been keeping you bound. So I hope you're ready. So those, the, so those who were sent went their way and found it just as he said to them. But as they were loosening the colt, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosening the colt? I don't know about you, but if someone was trying to take my property, I don't think I would be that nice. Right? But they said, and they said, the Lord has need of it. Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their clothes 
on the colt. Some say cloaks, some say tunics. And they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the ground and on the road. And as he now draws near to the descent of Mount Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, in other verses say, Hosanna. But in, but in here it says, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. This is the part right here. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. I don't know about you, but that, that just stirs my spirit today. If I am not able to praise the Lord the way that I should, he says that the stones will cry out. The worship and praise unto God will pour out somewhere. It says Jesus sweeps over Jerusalem. It says that now he draws near and he saw this city and wept over it. He said if you had known, even you especially in this day, that the things that may make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. This is the part I want to share with you, church. How many times do we come to church and we have the opportunity to be in the presence of God? But so many times the presence of God is moving, but do we miss it? Today, I don't know about you, but the presence was flowing in such a beautiful way. But did you miss it? My question to you is, when's the last time you'd say you're in the, truly in the presence of God? When's the last time you set everything aside? I don't know, God's been doing something in me this week. And I pray that he starts to do it in your spirit and in your home with your children and at home at work. When I read this, it's like, it's amazing to know that God would even weep for me. For the moments of how many times have I been at this altars and weeped for him, but to know that he weeps for me. Just to say that he wants the presence, not just my worship, not just my praise, but he wants all of me. He doesn't want my lip service. He doesn't want just my actions. Because that comes out of a place of love. He wants a relationship with you, church. And so many times we miss the mark. We're so worried about what's going on here in service. We're so go worried about the things that are going on at home. That we're so overwhelmed. And he says, I'm right here for you. I'm ready to take whatever you have. Just lay it down before my feet. I have Zach come up here today? I think he's ready, right? I called Zach and I told him, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use you today, Jack. Or Jack, Zach. Come on, Zach. You ready? Come on, Jack, let's do this. I like illustrations, all right? Can you catch? Yeah. I hope so, because he plays baseball, if you didn't know. What position do you play, Zach? Right field. All right, I used to play right field. All right, do you think you can catch this? If you drop this, we're all going to laugh. You ready? Are you sure? Here, ready? Okay, right? You ready? All right, catch. All right, thank you. That's it. I just need to. I got it. <laughs> I love that kid. Did you see what he did, though? Did anybody see what he did? How many times do you come to the house of God without ex expectation? My youth pastor used to tell me all the time, and I tell these kids all the time, he says, come expecting. Because when you come expecting, you're ready to search out and see what God has to do for that moment. In this moment, it says that they, they came in. In other stories, it says that many came, and they were asking, who is this? And they were saying, this is the prophet. This is the prophet. There's so many people in Jerusalem, and that's what he was crying over. He was saying, many of you didn't recognize the peace that came into this place. How many times have we come into a place of worship? Because what does worship does it? It prepares our hearts for the message to come. And if we don't prepare our hearts, we'll miss out on the opportunity of the message that is being presented to you. And if you didn't watch Zach, that's why I did like this like ten times. What do we normally do? 
we do this thing where if you're ready to receive, you already put your hands out, ready in expectation. How many times do we stand here during worship and we're just standing there? I love the different, if you ever watch memes and the stories, they talk about the different stances in worship, right? What are some of the stances we talk about? We talk about the I surrender, right? Your hands are up. You got the field goal. You're ready for the goal of God to come into and receive. What do you got? You got the, the hands out like you're going to receive a present. Then you got the cup like you're going to, something's going to be poured out into you. How many got these hands raised, right? You, you know, how many guys gets heavy sometimes? They just start going down and down and down and down and down. I don't know about you. It's me. Sometimes I'm like at this point during worship, I'm like, my Lord, I need to do arms more in the gym. Help me out here. But there's just this, when you come into the house of God and you come ready to receive, you should come into a place of expectation. And when you come into a place of expectation, whenever the words are being spoken, this is this option where whenever they speak, they're, they're literally praising God in this part of the story. Lifting them up. It was, it was actually a, a prophecy that was just in Zechariah 9, 9. It says, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, the king is coming to you. He is just and endowed in, with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a donkey. We can miss the coming of God. We could be in the presence of God and still miss him. How many times do we stand here when it passes us by? When the sign is right in front of us, when the one thing that we've been looking for, but we miss. How many times do we pray to God, God, give me an answer. God, I need to be in your presence. God, take this from me. And it's here in this moment, but it's all up to you to let go. It should be. How should we usher in the presence of God? By laying down our coats and cutting the branches and recognizing our Savior, the Prince of Peace. The word Hosanna, a lot of times I thought it until I really went in. It says, I thought it was like a praise word. But Hosanna actually means save us now. They're in a place of expectation to praise us now. If you didn't know... If, I always wonder, God, why a donkey and not a horse? It would just been so much cooler with a horse or an elephant or a giraffe or something. But he picks a donkey. A minute donkey, something that just ins it, to me is insignificant. But he chose a donkey for a reason, and a donkey was a representation of peace. When a king would draw uh, right in. Into a city, if he was riding in on a horse, he'd be riding in and it would signify a time of war. In that moment, he wasn't trying to come into a place and say, I'm coming to disrupt what is happening because the Roman Empire was over them and sub subsiding over them. And they were wanting to save them now. But he says, you're missing it. I come to give you peace, not war. I come to give you this thing that you've all been searching for for so long. This inner peace. You want me to do the things right now in the physical, but I'm trying to bring you spiritual peace. So many times, God, I need you to change the circumstances around me. But he says, I'm not going to change the circumstances around you until I can change what's in here first. Because if I change this out here, the circumstances will still stay the same. You'll go right back to where you were before. Joshua 1, 11 through 12. says that he came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as as many as received him, to them they gave, gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. Church, sometimes it's so easy to come into a place of familiarity. It's so easy to come into the house of God 
and do the same ordained thing over again, the same thing over and over and over, and it just becomes ritual. Just like the Pharisees, it becomes more of a religion than a relationship. It becomes something that I do, not before who I do it to. We could come in and we could sing the songs. We could raise our hands. We can do all these things, but are you recognizing what's happening in the moment? I need you to cash this today. Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to receive what God has for you? Are you ready in this moment? The amazing thing about this is God is not an untouchable God. He's not an unreachable God. He's a humbled God. A God that dwells amongst his people. If you think about it, it's a God that is so amazing that he left heaven. The glory and majesty of heaven where cherubim are around him all day sing, Holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The streets are paved with gold. The, the gates are made of pearl. There's rubies and diamonds everywhere. There's no sickness, no death, nothing. There's a, a, the, literally the throne room of heaven is like a sea of glass. But he left all that to come to earth. To humble himself to say that like no other God I've ever heard before within my life. Come to live a life from birth to death so that he can recognize himself with you. There's nothing that we have gone through that he hasn't gone through. There's no pain that he hasn't felt that we haven't felt. He's lost a loved one. It says that he cried at the tomb of Lazarus. His friends later on in the story will leave him behind. The, the one that he thought was also closest to him backstabbed him and sent him off. Those that he thought were around him, that loved him, cursed him, beat him, and put him on a cross. And how many times do I find myself in that moment just as guilty as those? But he still came for my sake and for yours. Like why? Because he loves you. He weeps for you, church. God in flesh was standing right before their eyes and they still missed him. I pray to God so many times, like, God, just reveal yourself to me. I've been praying that all week. God, reveal yourself to me. I want the, the, the greatness like Moses in the burning bush. Abraham, when he heard of Isaac and the prophecy, I want, I want to be able to be like David and be able to just usher in his presence with my praise. I want to do all these amazing things and be in the presence of the Lord. But if he was right here in front of me, would I still miss him? He was in physical form, and they still missed the presence of God. Are you missing the peace that is right in front of you? Matthew 21, 10 through 11, it says, And when he had come into Jerusalem, and the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee, not the Messiah, not this is our king of kings. This is just a prophet. I love the significance of the palm branches in the cloaks. As you sit, as they sat with it, uh, sat it down, they really were the only things that make sense. So this is right here, ready? Palm branches, easily picked up and easily discarded. The amazing thing is, I'm going to grab these ones, the camera, sorry. This is something that says that they go in off and they cut branches. And what this would do is this was a representation when a king would come into this city. They would lay these down at the feet of the king. And as they would go, the, the donkey or the king would walk across these things. Where it was the dirt ground, where there was it was covered in muck and dirt and poo and all kinds of crazy things. What it was, it was just to honor them. But there's this moment where it says they laid down their cloaks. It says that they, they would take off their, their outer garment. 
I don't know about you with your Sunday best right now. Would you take off your garment? And it says that they would take it off, and the only thing that was under would be their tunics. The tunics was their undergarment. Would you be as vulnerable unto God? I'm not saying get down to your underwears in church. What I'm saying is taking off what you set so high and dear in your life that sometimes back in the day their cloaks would set their level of authority. And they said, I would lay it at the feet of Jesus so that he can walk across whatever title I may have, whatever authority I think I have, and say, I put you above whatever it may be, whatever junk, whatever junk that is there, I'm going to allow you to walk across. Are you ready to lay down? Because so many times we are so guilty with our pride or our shame or our fear. We're like, God, I don't, I don't know if I can do that because they're going to know I'm a sinner. We know you're a sinner. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We all sin. He says we are like filthy rags unto God. The righteousness of God, but it is by his grace and his mercy that we are forgiven. Church, say, I am forgiven. But even when you are forgiven, you still got to lay things down. How many times have we received Jesus Christ into our heart, but I still hold on? What are you still holding on today, church? I don't know how many Christians I hear whenever they, you know, it's their attitude or the things that they do. That's just the way that I am. No, the Bible says you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old ways have passed away and the new has come. I have to lay something else to be able to be, be able to play something else upon me. I have to lay down my old ways for God to give me something new. Who's ready to be new? Who's ready to receive? Who's ready to let go? I don't know if I was just singing the praises of God was bigger in Jerusalem because they recognized who he was, but then, I don't know. And because the people saw that and understood that, they gave exactly what they needed, revealing themselves and exposing themselves. Are you hiding behind your cloak today? Is there some part of you you're holding back. And are you ready to give all of yourself into the moment and to the king? Are you ready to throw down your cloak today? This is the amazing part, and I love this. See, this is hard about Palm Sunday. So many things going right to Palm Sunday. This is part where it says to the Pharisees in Luke 19. It says, and some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. If you didn't know about this point is to be in the presence what they would consider him to be a rabbi. And if you didn't know the expression of what a disciple is, a disciple would be somebody they would choose from a very young age. And they had to see if they were qualified to be able to even come into this place where they can follow a rabbi. It says the disciples were unqualified in the eyes of the Pharisees. The religious spirit was over them. They were, they were unqualified to even follow along this, this rabbi because to them they were just fishermen, tax collectors. They were these unqualified men. I don't know about you, but I don't even think I am qualified to follow the Christ like I think I should. But yet, in this moment, Jesus recognizes what they were saying. How dare they praise and be undignified, that the Pharisees were saying. The disciples saw something that those who were supposed to know better were blind to see. The Pharisees knew about the prophecies. The Pharisees knew about the coming Messiah. The Pharisees would read the Torah in front of the temple and, and they would go around and pray and be religious. And how many times do we can have that religious spirit inside of us? We read our word, we pray, and we're in the midst and the presence of God, but I'm dignified. 
We can sometimes have that, that, that religious spirit. The Jewish culture made it customary for a child to begin his religious training at the age of five, continuing to the age of 12 or 13. If a boy was an intelligent and interested in the continuing the religious studies, they would seek a rabbi and to disciple him, and he would follow the patterns of their life of the rabbi till age 30. Do you know Jesus started his ministry at the age of 30? To follow a rabbi meant to living with a rabbi, sharing life with him and taking part of a rabbi's whole way of life. A disciple might accompany a rabbi in all the day routines, prayer, study, debating other, with other rabbis, giving alms to the poor, uh, burying the dead, going to court, etc. A rabbi's life was meant to be a living example of someone shaped by God's word. That's another thing. We can know the word of God, but still not know the God of the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, but we can miss God even though we're reading his word. Disciples therefore studied, and not just the text of scripture, but also the text of the rabbi's life. Disciples were known for walking behind their rabbi, following him so closely they, they, we, they would become covered with the dust kicked up by their sandals, they said. Can you imagine being so close to somebody? Every single day of your life following them. In the same way the disciples were in the presence of God and they were gleaming literally from Christ himself. Today, are we as disciples because you are considered a disciple? The Bible says to go and share the good news and make what? Disciples. Church, we're supposed to be so close to God that we're supposed to be covered in him. This would be a powerful image if we would just happen to see it in the eyes of the disciples. Disciples were expected to follow the rabbi so closely that they would be covered with the master's whole way of thinking, living and acting. A disciple is also a demeaning word. A disciple is something that they would say, are a follower of Christ, a Christian, somebody that they recognize because when they saw the disciples, they also saw God. They saw Jesus because they were around him so much. They started to act like him, talk like him, be around him so much that the presence, when they would walk into a place, the area they were around, the spirit would be so heavy that the miracles of God just had to happen. Church, are there miracles happening around your life in this moment? Is God placed you in moments and places where the move of God can be all, uh, just allocated to your life to where it's just overpouring? This is what it means to be a disciple. Yes, Isaiah 29, 13, the Lord says, these people have come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. Church, there has to be a difference. It's not just coming into this place. I think I, I, we use Sunday a lot, but the Sunday is only a preparation for the week. We get you into this place and we give you four songs, right? We get you into this place, we do tithes and offering. Then we give you a message and an altar call. And then we send you on your way. But that's not the end all to all these things. Because it, worship is only to prepare you to how you should be worshiping throughout the week. Do you know worship isn't just words that we sing on a screen or a music that we play. It's actually actions that we do. That worship is actions. The way that I treat others, the way that I talk to each other, the way that I treat my wife, the way that I, 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 I correct my children, the way that I am at work, the way everything I do is praise unto God. That is worship. 
And sometimes this is just a place that we could come to to be refreshed and sent back out to just spread the presence of God. So when people do ask, who is that? That's Jesus. That's my God. That, that's my Savior right there. That's, that's the one that saved me from the darkest place in my life. He's, he's the one that set me free when all my chains were bound. When I was in my deepest, lowest moment, and I didn't think I could get out. When I thought my child was lost and they walked away, he's the one that brought them back. He's the one that I'm still believing in this moment for. This is my Messiah. This is the one you've been waiting for. You may be very active and involved in church, but without the fullness of the Spirit, you'll miss the power of God. What God is seeking from us is not activity, but a deeper relationship. I, you can be so focused on the things. I, I don't, as a pastor, I think, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to counsel this person. I got to go here. You know, my, my wife is wanting me to do this at home. I, gotta, I have so many things, but it's even myself. I find myself distancing myself from the Lord because I'm doing the things for the Lord, but without him. And I'm like, God, why isn't, why, why am I feeling heavy? Can I get the worship team up here? Why am I feeling so tired? God, why isn't it working like it used to? Because there's something that happens when you first receive Jesus Christ into your heart. It's like this overwhelming expectation. And you're like, you can't wait for what's next. You can't wait to read your word. You can't wait to share with those that are around you. You're really, you're ready to give God everything and anything. You're like, Psh, forget that relationship. Psh. You know what? That's holding me back. Psh. But we get so much into routine. I don't want to be like the Pharisee. I want to be like the one that's at the feet of Jesus, laying down palm branches in my clothes and giving him everything. I want to make sure that I'm in the presence of God. Don't be so focused on what you thought was supposed to happen that you miss on what God is doing now. I'm not sure many of them thought, I thought you were going to save me in this moment, but then... A week later, he dies on the cross. And yet they still walk away. It says multitudes used to follow him, four, five thousand at a time. Not including men and, and, I mean, women and children. And when they thought all hope was lost, they lost their faith in the God that they thought was going to come and save them now. Hosanna. Isaiah 43, forget all that, is nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do not, do you not see it? I have made a pathway through the wilderness and I create rivers in the dry wasteland. As a worship team comes today, I'm not going to do a regular altar call. What I'm going to do today is I want to give you the opportunity if you felt like you missed the presence of God or you need to lay some things at the altars. Sometimes we just need to leave our comfortable seats and find ourselves at the face of Jesus. If you can come here with me today and just find yourself at the feet of Jesus in this moment. I don't need another prayer I don't need someone to lay hands on me in this moment. All I need is Jesus. All you need is Jesus. But the hour has come and it is here and now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. Isaiah 55, 6, seek the Lord while he may be found. 
Call upon him while he is near. Don't miss it. I'm telling you, come, seek, and you will find. Come expecting. With the spirit of expectation, God is ready. And what you do is you loosen the hands of God. If you're here at the altars, if you're kneeling down, or you're here in your seats, I just, I just give you an idea just to raise your hands. Raise them. Because God wants to find you wherever you're at in this moment. Father, I pray that your spirit be in this place, my Jesus. Let not this be another just Palm Sunday, a cute message about palms, Father God, and donkeys. But Lord, I pray in this moment we prepare our hearts for your presence to be in this place, my Jesus. Fill us from the top of our head to the very soles of our feet. We come expecting Jesus. Worship team. Good morning. 
just real quick, just let the presence of God just flow. Just real quick, just wait. Just wait. Just let it go, Isaac. Just put your, turn it up, Isaac, just a little bit. Just come on. Just right now, I just need you to do is, Josh, can you just, just prophetically just start singing? Just, just, just let it out. And right now, everybody across this place, real quick. What I want you to do is, is, with no words, no nothing, just Josh prophetically just proclaiming over right now, just with his, with his song and voice. What I want you to do is I just want you, just as the disciples and those are in the place, and they just praise unto God. I just want, not just another lip service, but I just want you to be able to just give God thanks in this moment. All across this room, wherever you're at, just raise your hands. All within your seats here at the altars. Just thank God for what he's done in your life in this moment. Let the voices just roar in this place. Josh, go and go sing. Go real quick. Oh, you are. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Imagine Jesus coming into this place right now. As we usher him into this place, God, we just thank you for all that you've done, my Lord. Let this be a moment, Father God, for the rest of our lives that we recognize you and seek your face. To know that you are just as desperate for me as you are. That I am to you, my God. Lord, I just pray in this moment, Lord, that you just feel every single heart in this place, my Lord. That you cover them anew in this moment, Jesus, as they lay themselves down to you, Jesus. I pray that you hear their cries, Father God, that you wipe every tear. That you wrap every, that you wrap your arms around every person, my Jesus. Lord, as we leave this place, Lord, we do never leave your presence, God. For your Bible says you never leave us nor forsake us. We just take you with us, Father God. Lord, we 
Lord, we give you all the honor and all the praise, my Lord, in this moment. Let us recognize the sacrifice that you willingly gave for us in this moment. Lord, I pray for your hand of protection over see every single place, person, Father God, as they leave this place, Lord, that the schemes of the enemy do not come against them, Father God. I pray for their homes. I pray for their finances, Lord. I pray for their minds and their hearts, Lord Jesus. And I pray for a release over their life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I love you, church. I love you. Have a blessed week. God bless you. We'll see you guys. Don't forget, this Friday we have Good Friday. We'd love for you guys to be here. So God bless you. If you're a first-time visitor, we'd love for you to meet us over here. I'll personally be over here in that moment. And so we just want to give you a little bit of gift and get to know you a little bit more. God bless you. Thank you for those that are watching online.